What is going on guys? Today we are here with a really good friend of mine, Alex. He is another very successful gym owner in the Houston area and we're going to do a little interview. I want to give you guys a little insight of his story, how he went from working a nine to five to now being a very successful entrepreneur, a millionaire, right? Yep. Yeah. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and get to it. Alex, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah for sure, bro. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for uh, allowing me to be the first guest. Of course, of course. So, where are you from? So, I am here from Houston, Texas. Okay. Uh, I went to Galena Park High School. Played okay. Played sports growing up. Didn't come from a rich family. Didn't come from, a, you know, a, a poor family. So, I would say I came from a really humble family. Okay. You know? That's awesome. And uh, were your parents entrepreneurs or anything like that? They weren't. No, they weren't. No one in my family uh, has a business right now. Okay. Uh, no one on my wife's side of the family owns a business. So I would say, no, I didn't really have, you know, any anybody to look up to as far as owning a business yeah. you know, doing or in that aspect of it, you know. But yeah. And prior to opening up your business, your gym, uh, what were you doing? So I used to sell uh, insurance. So I used to sell home insurance, car insurance. Okay. You know, so you, you, were, you were one of those guys. Yeah, I was an insurance salesman. <laughs> It beats, it beats door to door sales, but I was selling insurance. Um, so I went to, went to college, graduated from U of H. Okay. And I wanted to, you know, do something with my, my college degree, right? That's, okay. Everybody, that's kind of how they train you. They want you to. So you did go to college? Yeah. Okay. Graduated from U of H. And then right after U of H, I started selling insurance. I did that for about four or five years, and then it just wasn't for me. Yeah. That's it. And it doesn't beat like running, it's nothing like running your own business. Okay. And uh, I guess, uh, Prior to, were you like good in school or anything like that? Like, was nah, school dude. was something that you were like, oh, I love school? Because, you know, there's a lot of people in there that mm -hmm. uh, they just love going to school. They like, yeah. you know, the school systems and all that stuff. Yeah, for me, it was more, so I didn't get bad grades. Okay. You know, I got decent grades. I got grades good enough where I can get a scholarship to go play baseball. Okay. And that's what I did. So I was doing enough to get by to be able to get recruited, go play college baseball, experience all that. But I wasn't one, like an A-plus student you know, exceeding okay. in, in school like that. Yeah. If anything, growing up, my mom was really strict on me. So if I got great, bad grades, yeah. I was going to get my ass whooped. So okay. that was my motivation growing up okay. is to not get my ass whooped. Yeah. But, uh, fast forward to whenever you were working, uh, your nine to five. Yeah. What was, what was like a yearly salary looking like working in sales? So my last year there, I'd say my last year, cause that was probably my best year. That was the best year. Okay. Um, Probably sixty, seven thousand dollars. Sixty, seventy thousand dollars. Yeah, before okay. tax. Yeah, before tax. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, before okay. tax. And you know, that's the thing when I when I say you know they teach you to do the nine to five. Yes. College sets you up for work to work for someone else, right? They they they're teaching you you got to get up early, you got to go to work, you know, and then you you live in the normal life, and that's kind of what we fell into. Yeah. You know, after we graduated, I uh, went to school or I went to work. That's all I did. Went home, worked out, and then it's the same routine every single day. Yeah. You know, and over five years, it just got old. It okay. It wasn't for, for me, you know? Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because I do feel like the, the school system is broken. I feel like it's one of those things that hasn't gotten looked at for many decades. And um, I feel like they're still teaching the same thing, uh, even though, you know, when we live in a completely different world, for now, sure. you know, it seems like. So I do feel like school does kind of like, it's like a programming system that sure. teaches you how to be... Uh, a slave, right. you know, to the system, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I disagree with the with the school system a lot, but you know. Yeah, I mean, they should be teaching how to run a business, you know, oh, 100%. how to do your taxes, yeah. you know, all these important things that you face in life that they don't teach you during school. Yeah. Whether they're teaching you social studies, they're teaching you about bullshit. You know what I mean? So that's why. Yeah. I, I think yeah, it needs to be reevaluated for sure. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah, no. And uh, so, what got you into wanting to start your own business? So it wasn't necessarily the gym. The gym wasn't my first business. Okay, so you had, a, oh, I didn't know that. You had a business yeah. prior to the gym. What yeah. was that? So what I, when I was in college, uh, when I was at U of H, I decided to open up a rim repair business. Okay. I told you about that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I did that um, part-time. I was doing that, going to school. And the, the reason why I did that, because when I got back to U of H, after trying to make it in baseball, I didn't make it, right? So I okay. transferred back to U of H. And when I got to U of H, they didn't take a lot of my classes because they were out of state. Okay. So U of H is really strict on the kind of classes they accept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was so far behind in school and I was like, I need to catch back up. So I was fucking five, six classes a semester and I needed to make money because I was paying for my school. I didn't have a scholarship anymore. Okay. You know, I'm not going to ask my mom or my dad for money. Of course. Right. And so that's when I started the rim business. So I was doing that and I, you know, it was on my own calendar, my own schedule. I get to make my own calendar, this, this, and this. Yeah. And so, so did you like watch YouTube videos on how to, how to fix wheels and no, stuff so like that? I was that? actually, okay. I was fortunate enough to have a, 
I call him my uncle, but it's my dad's friend. Okay. Uh, his name's Gilbert. He does this. He does the rim restoration up in Austin, and he's okay. been doing it for ten plus years. And I mean, the dude's making a killing, bro. Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. he does it for like twenty different dealerships in, in the Austin area. Okay. So when I go visit my dad, my dad lives in Austin. I go visit my dad. I didn't want to be in my, the car industry. My dad worked at the dealership. I didn't want to be at the dealership all, all day. So I asked him, "Can I go work with Gilbert?" And so just over the years, I just picked up the, the skill, and okay. you know, I decided to do it on my own. Because I saw the money in it, and I also saw the freedom of, of being able to do my own, my own schedule. Of course. And so that's I did that for a couple of years. I even did it while I was, while I was selling insurance. I was still doing rims on the weekends. Okay. Just trying to make trying to make as much money as we could. Yeah. And so, the gym business wasn't my first business. After the rim business, we uh, opened up a, a food truck. Okay. Uh, the Tarico. That's right. The, yes. Yeah. Yes. So we yes. Did yes. The food truck. We did that for a year, and by far, that is the hardest business that I've ever done. The food truck business. Bro. Yeah. Anything in the food industry, if you guys are watching, you're in the food industry. Bro, Horrible. We applaud you so much because that shit is hard. Yeah, even even like worse than the than the gym business. Bro, I, I talk to Abby about this, and I talk to anybody about running a gym, and I'd say that running a gym is the easiest thing. Yeah. Compared to the food truck, compared to yeah. you know, some other stuff. I think the hardest thing about owning the gym is literally coming up with the capital at the beginning, you know, yeah. to to start up the, yeah. the gym, and you know, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I do think that it's a very cash intense uh business venture 100 percent, you know uh but yeah back to the food truck man yeah that's that's pretty much when i met you and i actually i remember talking to you because you came over to, to the gym he was uh he was in one of our events and uh he brought the food truck and everything and that was my first the first time i ever met alex and i remember you telling me that you wanted to open up a gym yeah and you know i thought you were just bsing because no, I, I get that all the time you know yeah, people yeah. tell me that all the time like oh george i'm gonna open up my gym one day and never really do it so it was actually very impressive uh, to see somebody actually say something and actually do it, you right. know. Yeah. Uh, and before I knew it, I saw you created the Instagram page, started posting pictures of the of the, mm -hmm. of the place, and I was like, oh damn, he actually did do it. Yeah. I was very impressed by that, man. Because after that conversation, I mean, I was talking to other gym owners as well, picking yeah. their brains. Because I think with any industry that you get into, you need yes. to be knowledgeable about what you're getting into. Okay. Just because I say I want to open up a gym and I do no research, that doesn't mean I'm gonna do shit. Yeah. I, I can talk about it all day, but if I'm not taking any action. Then it's never going to happen. Yeah, and action come in many different ways. It's not necessarily like the money aspect, the learning aspect. I think it's more important than the financial side yeah. of things, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I feel like there's a lot of people that want to do things, but they're not really doing research or like things that you can literally do there for free, you know? Yeah. You can go out there and talk to other people that are currently doing what, uh, what they want to do. For sure. Uh, YouTube, YouTube is a big, you know, very powerful source of information, yeah. Google. And I feel like people are not really educating themselves into whatever it is that they want to do, yeah. man. And I feel like that really, that really shows you who's actually like actually Seriously. wanting to do it, yeah. you know? But yeah, no, so that, yeah, that, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. The, You're the, gonna, yeah, and we ran into some people that, you know, were, were good, good people like you, you know, you gave us information that we wanted. Yeah. You weren't really like keeping it to yourself, kind of holding that information. Because I ran into other gym owners too. I spoke to them and they're like, dude, don't open up a gym. There's no money in opening up a gym. Yeah. Just shooting us down from the fucking beginning. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, well, damn, you know, I go back, me and my wife are there having a the conversation. Like, is this the business that we want to devote our lives to? Yeah. After hearing that there's no money into it. But then just, you know, getting past that, talking to other gym owners, getting their experiences, hearing from them was, you know, look at us now. You know, was, at the oh, end of the day, it was the best decision. Yeah, I think when, before I started Roman, uh, I would hear that all the time, man, and it made me question, man, do I really want to be a part of this industry that supposedly you make no money out of, you yeah, know? Yeah. But there's gyms popping up everywhere, so I was like, yeah. no, I, I think there's got to be a way to make money out of this. You can make money out of anything, you know? Yeah. So I, that's why I pretty much decided to go that route too, man. But yeah, everybody was telling me, yeah, don't, the gym thing, there's no money in it. Other gym owners were telling me the same thing too, but I was yeah. like, there's just no way, you know, it just didn't make sense to me. So I, that's what I pretty much went through with it as yeah. well. That's why you can't you can't listen to everybody that says you know, there's going to be a lot of negative people. Hundred percent. We try to surround ourselves with positive, uplifting people. You know, of you, the, the moment you start surrounding yourself with people that are telling you that it's a bad idea, telling you that you're never going to succeed, yeah. then you're never going to start doing it. And sometimes it could be family, uh, friends, you know, people that are close to you. I remember I had this friend. He would always tell me, "Man, like you need to have a plan B in case this doesn't work." But yeah. in my head, I was like, no, this is going to work, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I don't talk to a lot of those people anymore, man. And luckily, my family has been very supportive. That's awesome. Um, I'm guessing your family has always been very supportive of anything that you do as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my obviously, my biggest supporter is, you know, my wife. Yes. Both of us, we, we open this up together. Yes. And so if I didn't, honestly, man, if I didn't have that by my side, then I probably would have listened to the people that said, hey, you know, it's a bad idea. Don't open up a gym, you know? But the, the fact that you, uh, we went through it, I went through it with someone next to me. Yeah. 
I was like, there's no way we can fail. Yeah. You know? No, and your wife's just a very positive individual, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's very know. supportive, it seems like. And I, she's, that's from awesome. that's she's from Monterey, that's <laughs> why. She's from Monterey. That's awesome. Dude, they man. just built different out there, man. Yeah, they're yeah. built tough, huh? They're willing, yeah, but, they're ready to work. For sure. Yeah. And I'm grateful, you know, grateful that I have someone like that by my side that, that helped us, you know, because without, I mean, we, we both play a piece in the puzzle, right? Of course. What I'm good at, she isn't. What she's good at, I'm not. Of and course. so the fact that we're able to mesh together and open something like this and become successful, yeah, it just goes to show that you can't be listening to the people that are, are going to doubt you from the beginning. Yeah, no, 100%. And I feel like that's, there's a lot of, I feel like that's very, more commonly known like in the Hispanic uh, culture, you know, where uh, the husband and the wife are working, you know, to build whatever it is that they, they want to build. Yeah. You know, it seems like, uh, I think I think that's definitely the best the best way to go about it. Yeah, and we're, I mean, we're a little bit different in our relationship because you think about the traditional Hispanic household, right? The husband's supposed to provide for everything and yeah. the wife's just going to sit at home and not do anything. Of course. But there's no way I can tell Abby, sit at home and not do anything. She has to do something. That's yeah. the kind of person she is. Yeah. So we kind of broke that mold yeah. to say, you know, about the, the Hispanic household. So I think two incomes is better than one. Oh, 100%. And so that's how we... Uh, came up with the funds to open up the first gym. Yeah, and uh, did it? What were some of the things I guess that you had to sacrifice to save up enough money to, you know, build this? Yeah, um, I'd say going back to what I said earlier, I mean, I think we live pretty simple lives. You know, we I used to shop at Old Navy, or I'd shop at you know Marshalls, Ross, all yeah. that kind of stuff. At the time, I had friends. You know, they after high school, after college, they started making a little bit more money, so they started buying nicer clothes and stuff like that. Living without the means. Yeah. Right? And we've always lived within our means or under our means. Like we live like we're poor. Okay. And I think that's the reason why we're able to save so much money. Cause we didn't go out, we didn't spend money on clothes. Yeah. Bro, if you look at my Instagram from like 2015 to 2018, I'm literally wearing the same workout clothes that whole time. Yeah. You know? So it's like saving li that little bit of money on clothes that we're saving just over time, it just added up into something bigger, right? Yeah. Cause at the time I, we didn't know what kind of business we wanted to do whether gym, whether it be something, we just knew that there was something that we wanted to do that wasn't the nine to five. Yeah. You know? And so just a little bit over time, saving the money for four years, that's how we came up with the funds. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I do feel like nowadays we live in such a world where, uh, you know, you you have to be flashing things on Instagram. You know, you kind of have to be flexing the brands and yeah. uh, fancy cars. And a lot of these people are, don't have a lot of money, man. You know, no, they literally no, just yeah. living paycheck to paycheck, just trying to make the payments on these things that they're constantly, you know, flashing on Instagram. Sure. And uh, I don't know if you've seen, but on ev in every platform, it seems like there's so many like sales gurus that are always trying to sell you this selling program on how to become a better salesman and all that stuff. These people probably never sold anything in their life, man. Yeah. They're just people just, you know, trying to get people to buy this product. And it, it, it's kind of sucks because I feel like there's a lot of those people that are doing that, man. They're yeah. just making quick cash like that. But I don't think that's that's not sustainable in the long no, run, no. you know? It's, it's creating a false sense of, uh, of like a false reality. Yeah, sense, you know, so These people think it's really easy to just start saving money, start selling a bunch of different stuff. But if you don't have a good product to sell, it's not going to sell. Yeah, 100%. I do feel like a lot of uh, a lot of companies, a lot of brands, are, they spend too much money on their marketing side of things and trying to get the, the name out there. But the product itself sucks right. you know yeah the, I, th I like that you built this uh, a product that sells itself without you having to run any ads or anything like that yeah. you know we don't run any ads on facebook any ads on instagram any ads on google the majority of our success is people having a good experience here yeah. and word of mouth yeah right if they have a good experience from the very beginning whether it's someone up front selling them a drink welcoming them that starts with you know a good experience starts there experience. then they have a good a good experience in the gym with the workout the atmosphere makes them sign up it makes them tell two three other friends yeah you know? no word of mouth is very powerful and that's also one of the things that you know we focus on since we started if you're thinking about opening up your gym that's one of the things that you should focus on focus on the customer service side of things you know the fancy equipment and everything all that stuff is very nice but it's not it's 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 not going to be a guarantee that you're going to succeed because of that you have to have build a good team have good staff make sure that everybody that comes For in sure. feels welcome and that's really that's really the key man yeah. you know that's that's the key to the whole gym thing man yeah. you know if you look at it from the high point of view i mean the people that are paying your bills are your members you yeah. gotta make sure you're taking care of your members yeah so when we opened this gym uh back in 22 i was looking at a video actually yesterday um and i literally had half the amount of equipment that i have in there right now and at the time i was like hell yeah this is enough this is going to be sustainable yeah. and some gym owners, uh, some other businesses, don't matter if it's a gym or not, but they see some success in the beginning and don't reinvest that money back into their members. Yeah. And their members leave. Whatever business it is, right? Yeah. 
So we were constantly reinvesting money. Yeah. The, the more we grew financially, the more the, the, the gym grew with equipment, with amenities and all that stuff. Yeah. I, th I just think it's crazy, and I give you a lot of a lot of props, man, because you built this, and how long have you been open for? Two and a half years. Two and a half years, man. Yeah. So you fucking killing it, man. I mean, I remember my first two and a half years, and I was not at the position that you're currently in, where, you know, you're about to expand and do all those things, and we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about your expansion plan here yeah. in a little bit, but I do think it's wild, man, that you just... You know, I was talking to you a couple of years ago. You opened up your gym maybe a year after that, mm -hmm. and then two and a half years later until today, you're fucking killing it, and you yeah. blew it up. You did what you said you were going to do, man. That's very inspiring. And I think that applies to just, uh, not just in the fitness scene, but just anybody that's wanting to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got to step outside of your comfort zone. you got to do things. you got to sacrifice things that most people aren't willing to sacrifice. And um, a lot of those things is materialistic things. A lot of those things is possibly even maybe spending time with family, loved ones and all that. You have to be willing to put your put your head in that in that headspace of like, I'm gonna do whatever it takes for this next three, four years to make this shit happen. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people don't have that, man. And it's kind of sad, especially with this newer generation, man. Sure. I feel like this newer generation is, uh, uh, they want things fast, man. Yeah. And success is not fast. You might have one in a million people that end up becoming wealthy overnight, man. That's not for everybody, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people are expecting that, bro. And it's crazy. But uh, whenever you first started, you, you said you, you funded this yourself with your wife. Yeah. There was no loans or anything no, we like didn't, that? We, yeah, we didn't grab any loans to, to start this business. And um, why didn't you? Because you know the option is there, you know, always, I guess, to sure. pull out a business loan. Yeah. And a lot of people struggle with this. Should I get a loan or should I just, you know, get investors or... Do I do it the hard way and save up money myself and then, you know, wait it out? Yeah, I think, well, with any business, you don't have any, like any financial or if, you were, if you're not in business and you're just starting off a business, it's hard to get a loan from the bank. For okay. Business. And I, we figured that out now. We're going into it really naive, really uneducated on the whole loan process. Yes. And all that stuff. But a big and a lot of people don't know that you can't really get a business loan if there's no business. Uh, for business sure. has to be open for a couple of yeah, years. Yeah. Like the bank will not just lend anybody out money sure. that wants to start their own business. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so the, the biggest reason why we didn't get a loan or ask for money is because we didn't want to have anybody's hands in our in our jar. Of course. Right. If we want to make decisions or changes in the gym, I don't want to have to ask this guy, hey, is it okay if I make a change? Yeah. I don't want to ask, have to ask investors. The only person I have to ask is my wife. Is your wife. Yeah. Uh, and well, I can, I, can over, I, mean, I can talk to her and sell her the idea. Of it. Yeah. But now some flowers, some chocolates. Yeah. Oh, just You're good some to go. Some flowers. <laughs> you can add another dumbbell section. <laughs> 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 But yeah, that, that was the biggest reason why we didn't decide to go the investor route. Okay. Because I didn't want to have people just telling me how to run my business. Of course. And yeah. did you have people approach you while you were in the process of, you know, buying equipment and things like that? Like, hey, like, are you looking for investors or were people wanting to pitch in, yeah. you know, money? What, what was like the most yeah. ridiculous one that you can think of? During, during the whole process of the build out, the gym and all that, no one came up to us and asked to be investors. Okay. But it wasn't a... And to the fact that after we opened and we were already successful, that they want to be investors into the new gym or into a second gym. Okay. So after they saw the success of, of Ring. Yeah. And I'm like, well, dude, I don't need you now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not, not that I needed you in the beginning. It was just, I'm always going to keep it close to the best with, you know, our businesses, right? It's going to be me, my family, my wife, whatever the case is. Yeah. But. It's funny because to me it was the opposite, man. Whenever, whenever I was first, you know, putting equipment in a storage unit, uh, I would have family members that were like, hey, man, like I got an extra $10,000, you know, maybe I can pitch in, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be partners and all that. And in my head, I was just like, what am I going to buy with $10,000, man, you know? That, doesn't, that didn't buy me anything. That wouldn't buy me anything. People just, people's perception of how expensive this stuff really is, man, is very off, you yeah. know? And it made me realize that back then. And uh, after we opened, nobody has approached me to, you know, I, I, feel, like, I feel like we're probably doing, because we're doing pretty good. To where I, I don't I don't I would never take in you know outside investors or anything yeah. like that. I would just wait it out and fund everything myself, which I, I like that you're doing that because yeah. that's that would be my approach as well. What about going back to Roman 1.0, the first Roman, a uh, Roman Empire? Roman Iron. Roman Iron. Yeah. Did you ever go to that one by the way? I did, yeah. You did. Yeah. What did, did you think? I liked it a lot. Yeah. yeah. That was like the time where we were like going around other gyms trying to see what they had, trying to like pick you know ideas how we can you know just getting ideas that we can implement into rain so yeah. we're going to there we're going to a bunch of different warehouses and yeah not so, really so rain was was a was an idea even prior to us like chatting about the gym yes yeah. okay cool yeah so was, that was always in the back of your head you were like i want to so, open up a yeah because 
back when we were living in Austin, this was back two years after we graduated uh, college, so back in 2018, 2019. Uh -huh. Also during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we had the, the conversation, like we wanted to open up a gym. Me and my wife were big into working out together. Yeah. We did, we did bodybuilding shows, we did all that stuff. And going to a couple of gyms, like in Austin, going to a couple of warehouse gyms here in Houston, that kind of sparked the idea of, this is something that I want to open. Okay. You know, and it wasn't until like going to those gyms where we started seeing the ideas and starting to see how realistic it actually is. Yeah. You know, but when you started looking at price or uh, pricing for the equipment and all that stuff, what were your thoughts where you're like, damn, that's a lot of money for one piece. Yeah. Well, so I did from the very beginning, I did a lot of Facebook marketplace. I did yeah. like Craigslist offer up all that stuff. I didn't even look at the price of new equipment at the time because I was like, there's no way I can afford it. Yeah. I, one new, one brand new piece of gym equipment can buy me four or five used, used pieces. Used of course. Right? So our biggest thing was like, we got to keep our bottom line as low as we could yeah. from the very beginning. After that, we started reinvesting. We started buying some new stuff here and there. Yeah. And what was the total like uh, investment that, you know, yeah. you, you for paid this for this one? Yeah. yeah. So the, the initial one. Total investment with like everything included, like machines, the, uh, the build out. You know, first month, last month, yeah, all that stuff. It's probably about one hundred sixty thousand. One hundred sixty thousand. Yeah, Man, that's pretty good. Yeah. And that's so that was one hundred sixty thousand dollars that we both saved over the amount of four years. Yeah. From the first initial idea of opening a, a business. Yeah. Just any business. That so four years later, saving our money, saving our pennies, and so we had enough money just to open up, you know, the gym. And have you kept track of how much money you spent after you opened, up until now? Up until now. Probably about the same. Probably, probably about the same. It. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Probably. So we probably have about three hundred, close to four hundred thousand dollars invested into. Invested this. into this one. Yeah. Okay. That's with like plumbing repairs. It's all the kind of stuff that you don't know of until you actually get into it, right? Yeah. You see that I was talking about. Oh yeah. There's a lot of problems. Uh, every single month, there's something breaks. Yeah. You know. I, I think that's the fun part about running a business is having to handle those you know obstacles that come in at you just randomly. Yeah. Right. Because going back to the nine to five, it was just a constant thing every single day. You know, you get there at nine, you leave at five or six, okay. you know. And so the fact that that becomes a boring routine compared to now, where it's just something out of nowhere just comes up and I got to handle it. That just makes it more exciting. Yeah. You know, I don't get bored of running this business. I don't get bored of meeting new people in here. Yeah. You know? And how many members do you currently have in there right now? We probably have a little bit less than 1,500. A little bit less than 1,500? Yeah. That's a pretty good number, man. I remember I me mean, whenever I maxed out of my old gym three years in, bro, it was like 800 members. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because uh, COVID happened. And then uh, we ended up, there's a couple of 24 hour fitnesses that ended up, ended up shutting down. Mm -hmm. And they, all the, peop, the people were looking for gyms, you know? Yeah. And I think we gathered like 300 people from those gyms that closed down. That's the only reason why we made it to 800 members, man. Because our location was horrible, bro. The it, was, the, it was smaller. It was a lot smaller. Smaller, 17 parking spots, bro. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad. But that's one of the things that you don't think about whenever you first do anything like any any sort of business right you don't think about other things that are going to pop up like parking yeah. it's huge that's you super know important in, in, yes in gym business. i would much rather have a smaller facility with hell of a lot more parking you know yeah. I, I would take that over a bigger building with the smaller parking for lot, sure you know so yeah th there's a lot of things that pop up as you go along that you don't know and yeah. you don't have to know the answers to everything at the beginning but you just have to react fast as you know yeah. you're getting punched in the face left and right man and going back to like the the amount of members so like after we opened like our initial goal i remember talking to other gym owners another gym that has been open for a year and they had like 500 members and i'm yeah. like damn that's my goal like i want to hit 500 members 500. in a year yeah right if we do that that's you know it's going to pay the bill it's going to make us a little bit of extra money yeah because you start doing uh math you know you're yeah. like oh, all right 500 members at this price point yeah, yeah you yeah. start so that was our goal and um man this place like I just, I don't even know how it happened. It just blew up out of nowhere. Yeah. And we probably hit 500 members in three months. I do feel like people see that you're constantly reinvesting, renovating, and I, I feel like that's very powerful, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like people see that you're taking care of the place, taking care of the people. Yeah. Uh, that's that's really the biggest thing in any business. Just making sure that you're taking care of the customers, man. Right. Yeah. Uh, customers yeah. always come first, man. For sure. Yeah. And that's like you know even even taking care of them, like you know whether it's selling them something or making sure they have a good experience, but also just talking to them you know in the beginning i was i almost knew every single member by their name yeah now it's impossible to do that right but yeah i'm also not here as often yeah. you know but i still even though when i'm you know when i am here i'm getting to know the members talking to them a little bit we're me and abby are really involved in, in in the gym itself like yeah obviously personal stuff we don't get involved just because i'm not trying to be involved in that kind of stuff yeah, but yeah. you know talking to them getting getting to know them a little bit more like what they do for a living yeah what brought them to the gym i mean every the first question that we ask them when they walk in, it was somebody new or somebody that you know comes from out of town. It's like, how'd you hear about Rain? Why did you decide to come to Rain today and not 
Alpha Le or Alpha Land or Roman Empire. Like, what made you decide to come here? Yeah. So that's the reason why. You know, They're probably like, oh, because Roman is close. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's too far, man. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, it's, it's really important to discover those those questions, you know? Yeah. Discover the why they're, what, what brings them into the gym today. Yeah, and what is, what is like, the most common answer that you normally get? Friends. Oh, my friend goes here. Yeah, so yeah. word of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth. Okay. My friend goes here, or I just moved into the area, because this area is really up and coming as well. Yeah. You know, no, so that's... A lot of people are moving into it, which is great, because we got in at a good time yeah i honestly feel like that's one of the things that sucks about my gym bro it's so out of the way you know it's like 35 minutes down the road mm -hmm. and towards galveston yeah. you know there's the, the flow of people right here is crazy man yeah you know, but what, what makes your gym like i guess what makes that drive worth it is they walk in they see all kinds of machines in there how big it is how yeah. nice it is in there so they're like you know what it's not bad i'll yeah. drive 30 minutes again yeah no that's 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 the goal. that's what makes it worth it for them yeah, yeah. and uh what's it called it's a uh, so you're in the you're in the process of expanding right now. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people don't know the insides of what goes into it. But you're not buying a building. You're actually building one from the ground up. Yeah. And uh, just <laughs> on that topic alone, that's this build out's been a crazy you know crazy yeah. experience from the very beginning. And so we decided we wanted to purchase this building here. Cause the one that you're currently the one in. that we're currently in because okay. it was going to come with all three little warehouses around yeah. it. Yeah. Um, the owner wanted a crazy amount of money for this really old ass building. What was the amount? He wanted two million dollars. Two million dollars? Okay. Which is, when you think about it, it's not bad, but how many plumbing issues that we have to face yeah. here, and then the parking lot next door is not even included. I guess it wouldn't be bad if it was fully, uh, you yeah, know, fully gated, big parking lot. I would have paid that. But yeah. The fact the parking lot next door that I have, yeah. I'm literally paying that. I'm paying someone else to be able to use that. Yeah. You know, so. It just didn't make sense for us. And I was like, at that, at that price, I can just go build something else. So we bought a piece of land down the street, okay. literally two minutes away. Okay. And um, yeah, so we're in the process of getting all the permits and everything going. So that way we can build a bigger facility. Yeah. So facility is going to be about 16,000 square feet. And then we have another 3,000 square feet outside. Uh, okay. So it's going to be 19, 20,000 yeah, square 19, feet. 20, yeah, 19, 20,000 total gym. Okay. Total gym and how big is this one that you're currently in? So total, we're looking yeah. at 12,000. 12,000? But there's a lot of unused space. When you look at it, there's a lot of walls that are in the way that yeah. just eliminate actual square footage of, you know, accessible square footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the new gym is going to be all open concept, all big, big mirrors, you know, big, big, I don't know, just bigger in general, yeah. right? And so the fat, bigger, higher ceilings, I want to be able to fly a drone in there. I want people to, the way people fly in for Alpha Land, yeah. that's what I want people to fly in. I want them to fly in to go to the ramp. To go to rain. Yeah. Of course. Just yeah. because we're so centrally located, you got these, you know, these expos that happen in downtown. Yeah. Like five minutes from there. Okay. So they really, there's not another reason to go anywhere else, right? Yeah. Because I'm so close. But and, that's our big picture. And you think you'll be open sometime like towards the end of 2024 or at the beginning of 2025? Right now, we're shooting December, January. Okay. So either at the end of this month, or in, in at this the end year, of this year, or the beginning of next, okay. next year. Okay. And for those, for those people that are wondering, how much is the next project costing you? Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's also been delayed as well. Yeah. Because our project started off at, we're going to do 10,000 square feet. Okay. And then it went to 12,500. Yeah. And then it went to 15. Then it went to 16. So just overall, we wanted to make sure when we opened, it was going to be ready for use 100%. Yeah. And so our budget literally went from like, also, also with the land and everything. Yeah, yeah. So our budget in the beginning when we opened this was going to be about 2.5 million. 2.5 mil. 2.5 million. And then now. And where's that now? Yeah, now it's like closer to like 3.5. Damn. Okay. And a lot of people aren't going to believe that, but yeah. the cost of so much. There's so much that is involved in this project that we had no idea when, until we got yeah. into it. Yeah. Right. I think the once it whenever it opens, I think people will see the quality of it, and I think they For are sure. gonna you know be pretty impressed yeah. by it. You know, and but then, damn, so we're gonna be adding new equipment as well. We're taking a lot of the good stuff here. Yeah, getting rid of the stuff that doesn't really get used, and then gonna be adding brand new pieces. Now, does the 3.5 mil include all the equipment as well, or is that just for the build out? And that's just the build out. That's just the build out. Yeah. So you're probably gonna spend like another 500 maybe on equipment. I'd say close, maybe. Close to it. So yeah. you're talking about a four million dollar project. Uh, don't don't say that. <laughs> you said that. It's like when you think about that, you're like, damn, that's yeah. a lot of money, man. And it is a lot of money. Yeah. But, like, I, you know, I, if I can do it again, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it any other way because 
the reason this area is come up and coming. So yeah. we're going to be like the staple for this whole entire community around us. Yeah. Right? When they think of this whole area, Rain Athletics is going to be the number one topic there. Yeah. And so that's our that's our vision for this place. Yeah. No, that's pro. That's, that's, that's a big project, man. Yeah. That's, it's, that's it's been like I said, man. From the very beginning, we, you don't know until you get into it. The same thing with the gym business, right? If you're not doing any any like. Uh, research on what you're supposed to be doing or you know what machines cost what if you don't have any knowledge going into it you're gonna yeah. be hit blindly yeah right that's kind of how this project was i'm not a i'm not a general contract i don't know how much cost of concrete is i don't know how much cost of a whole building is yeah and you're actually, adding ac into that facility yeah, as well adding ac yeah. as well it's gonna be man it's gonna be bigger better nicer bigger parking lot all of concrete course. That's gonna be nice. And how many parking spots is that one gonna have? Because I know, yeah, you have a parking problem out yeah. there. Yeah. So we get gratefully, or you know, thankfully, we're really busy here. And yes. Our busiest time. We kind of we probably fit about 80, 90 parking spaces here. Okay. But they're like everywhere. Like. Yeah, yeah bro. I pulled up earlier, and there was like 50, 60 cars out there, man. And it's yeah. just 11 a.m. Man. I know. That's, That's crazy. Good. That's good. I'm like, damn. Bro, in the a, beginning. I'm gonna put business cards of Roman yeah. on all those people's <laughs> windshields. <laughs> in the beginning, dude, it was a ghost town in here during this time. Everyone came after work. Everyone came, you know, either in the morning. So like, between 10 a.m. to like 4 p.m., there's yeah. probably like three people in there when we are. And now, I mean, it's it's booming. Yeah. But going back to the question, the new the new spot should have at least 25, 125 parking. 100. Spaces. Okay, not 25, 25 125. 125, 125 parking spaces, all reserved parking spaces. Yeah. Um, and then we probably have some space in the back if we do overflow. We have some space for them. I think well. that's huge for the Houston area, man, because a lot of the businesses around here don't have parking yeah. spots parking, at all. Yeah. You have to park on the street. Mm -hmm. It's a big yeah. issue. It's a big issue here in the Houston area. And the fact that we have that many, all going to be fenced. It's gonna I, be, yeah, it's I think be. that's a big solution right there. Uh, just the parking and that being fenced, being a little private, mm -hmm. you know. That was our main priority going into the new spot. Obviously, the size of the warehouse, yeah. but also the size of how much parking that we have. Yeah. And so those two were the most important factors in in the new in the new build out. Yeah. And whenever you first started rain, did you ever think that it was going to end up kind of like where it's at right now? Absolutely. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not, man. Um, looking back at it, there's no way. Cause did you ever like think, man, this, this shit might not work? You know, I had doubts in the, like right before we opened. Okay. I was like, man, what if somebody comes here and has to spend all this money on this equipment? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, you just have all this, stuff. all your savings, man, are yeah. gone. Yeah. yeah. It's literally, we had about $5,000 left after we opened up the gym. Yeah. That was like our backup. Yeah. You know? And so, I think a week before we opened, you know, we're setting stuff up, we're moving in. I'm like looking at it, I'm like, man, what if this don't work out? Yeah. <laughs> I'll sell it all to George, I guess. But yeah. uh, uh, man, thankfully, it just everything happens for a reason, and it's happened. Yeah. It happens when it's supposed to. And me and my wife are firm believers on that. Yeah. So with this new project, I have no doubt at all that it's not going to be successful. Yeah. Just because of what we've already built with what we have here. Yeah. There's no reason why they wouldn't love the new Yeah, and product. you already got people's trust, which is the hardest thing to yeah, acquire, man. For sure. You know, people's trust. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But we're excited for that. And then, you know, who knows? Maybe we build a second and third after that. Yeah. That's, that's the goal. Give me some competition. Yeah, I got it. I'm if I can't little, be bigger than you, I might have more locations. I'm getting a little bored over there, man. <laughs> I'm going to open one up. There's man. not much over there, man, at all. I'm going to open you up know? a gym in Leak City. You guys heard that. <laughs> a rain in Leak City. <laughs> hey, that would be dope, man. Maybe we can open up a gym together one day. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, say we go open one up in like uh, Washington or Colorado or somewhere different. Yeah. Is is that the goal? The goal is to have you know a rain athletics in every major city eventually. No, nah, just I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a numbers game. I don't want to be an anytime fitness. Right? Yeah. I want to be where it's like solely they think of Texas. They think of you know the three big the, the, the big three, right? Yeah. And so we do want to have maybe two locations in Houston. Yeah. I want to open one up in Austin as well. Yeah. You know, I have family out there. I love the Austin area. Yeah. I think it will kill it out there in the Austin area. Yeah. Sure. And why, why, why is it that you decided to go ahead and build the new project, buy the land and everything, instead of just finding another building in the area and yeah. just leasing it, kind of like what you're currently doing? It was the cost of real estate. So going into that whole idea of, of moving, I didn't want to move far enough where it's an inconvenience for the current members okay right one minute away is not going to be an inconvenience for yeah someone. but if i were to move five minutes away yeah even though it's only five minutes you know that can be the, the determining factor why they go to another gym yeah you know they're hitting another gym on the way there so they're just going to stop there yeah so that was the biggest thing we wanted to stay within the area yeah and so even though it costs a little bit more to build here compared to five minutes away yeah. we decided to do it here yeah, and plus, I think that the property itself is going to go up in value oh, tremendously sure. within the next couple of years, you know? Sure. And I think uh, I think that 
that's a that's like a the business itself you know when, yeah. whenever you start buying real estate it goes in value it goes up in value over time and i think that's been kind of like my approach as well man uh because uh i think if you would have asked me two years ago whenever i was looking to expanding roman because i want i've been wanting to expand for a while i've been yeah. wanting to add a, suck, a second location here in houston my idea was like i'm just gonna buy a bunch of equipment lease another uh, a building yeah. we're gonna put a bunch of equipment in there and boom we're gonna open up a roman 2.0 somewhere yeah. you know but I feel like my ideology has changed so much over the over the past two years to now is that you have inspired me to like, OK, maybe we should buy, yeah. you know, land and build a building on top of it. Yeah. So that's kind of like where my head's been at, too. man. And I don't think I would have I don't think I would have thought that, mm -hmm. you know, if it wasn't for like talking to you or anything like that. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah. And, and well, I, here's the thing, though. You already have an established brand built. Yeah. Right. So it's easy for you to go and, and go build something else because so, people already know who Roman Empire is. Yeah. Now, for someone that are watching and they want to open up a gym and you have no brand built, it's extremely risky to go to an area you've never been in to go buy a piece of land or go buy a building. And that's a way bigger risk than just going yeah. and leasing that spot out. Yeah, yeah. So looking back at it, I think, I think it's the best, like the way we both did, we went into a lease, then we bought. Then we bought, yeah. Right, so I think that with any new business, whether it's a gym, whether it's any kind of business that you want to do, you want to get a feel for that area before you go in and, and invest so much money into buying a spot. Yeah. No. No, hundred percent. Right. Cause yeah. Cause I, I, like I said, there's a, there's, there's, it's, it's going to be more expensive obviously at the beginning, but sure. the long term return, it's going to be hell of a lot better, man. Yeah. And you know, I think I have seen a lot of gyms are, there are adding ver a location every year. It seems like, mm -hmm. and they're growing really, really fast, Yeah. you know, but I do see that as, not sustainable like at some point you know whenever because they're not purchasing you know land yeah. and building it they're yeah. just taking over buildings remodeling then slapping equipment in there and boom you know yeah. second location third location fourth location i'm just thinking of like the long term like the like the long term wealth side of things you know i feel like anything could happen at any given time you can lose the business right yeah. but the property is always going to be there sure. so you can go out and lease it you can go out and sell it whatever it is that you want to do so yeah. i think i think there's more, uh, there's, it's more, it's more kind of like secure thing. Whenever you do go out and you yeah, buy your property, sure. you build whatever it is that you want to want to do, you slap your business on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. If for some reason you ever want to retire, you sell the business, you sell the property, whatever it is that you yeah. want to do, you know, absolutely. as opposed to just having the business in a leased building, right. it, anything could happen. It's you can go risky. out of business. It's you know? risky as well. Cause what is, you, you could run into the scenario where the landlord is just being an asshole and wants yeah. to just kick you out. And that's what happened to me in my last spot, man, at uh, the smaller facility. Yeah. He wasn't going to re-sign the lease again. So yeah. that forced me to go out and, you know, look for a new spot. Yeah. And luckily, I was able to find one. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just lucky enough to find the perfect building, bro, because if it wouldn't have been for that, I don't know where I would, where Roman for would sure. be at right that's now. That's why I say, man, you know? everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So that guy, it was meant to be. That guy was just going to kick you out. Yeah. You know, and then if that would have never happened, you probably would have just still been in the same 6,000 square foot warehouse. Yeah. 6,500 square foot warehouse. So you yeah, it's about 65. I'm sure you would have done more, more like locations. I think I would have found maybe another building, but it probably wouldn't have been as successful as yeah. this one is. Yeah. I think the building plays a big, yeah. uh, you know, a big part of it. Yeah. So that's yeah. just one of those things, man. Like you can't get discouraged if something happens. And that's the fun part about doing, running any business. Yeah. It's having to, you know, pivot and make a decision because something some obstacles in your way now so now yeah. you have to make a decision to do something else for the business yeah and i think that's the most important thing that makes the business as fun as it is yeah and what would you say to somebody that's currently working at nine to five and it's wanting to start their own business yeah they just don't know how to go about it yeah i would say number one save your money save your pennies save your dollars and then don't buy lamborghinis don't buy lamborghinis <laughs> <laughs> no, my biggest piece of advice that I would give is, well, yeah, one, save your money, uh -huh. but also if, if it's any business, whether it's a gym, whether it's like a, a shoe reseller, just anything that you have a passion for, yeah, find a way to monetize that. Find a way to make money off that yeah. because you enjoy doing it already, right? So yeah. you're going to enjoy being there working, but the fact that you, they're already enjoying it and you get to make money, it just makes, it makes it that much better. Makes it a lot, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I would say. Just find something that you enjoy to do and then find any way to make money out of it. Cause it's, I mean, it's 2024, man. You can make money literally doing anything. You can make money out of anything. Selling yeah. feet pictures. I've, I've been, I've been doing that. You know, <laughs> that's how we funded. That's how, how I funded. That's how I funded the gym. <laughs> but yeah, that's that'd be my biggest piece of advice. Uh, also, you know, you have a passion for it. Be confident in it. Trust in it. Trust in yourself. No one's gonna want it more than you, for sure. 100%. You know, no, 100%. stay away from the negativity. Stay away from the people that are gonna bring you down. 
you want to have winners in your circle. You want to have people that are going to trust you, that are going to believe in you, because that makes the journey that much better. Yeah. 100%. No, 100%. Like with this gym, we have people on our side um, here with us till 3 in the morning, here with us overnight, you know, getting yeah. the gym ready. And I mean, I can't thank those people enough, honestly. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, obviously we're the face, but, but there's so much stuff that happens behind the scenes, behind the scenes that, you know, wasn't looked at or wasn't acknowledged. But the fact that the, the fact of the matter is rain wouldn't be where it is without them. You know, yeah. Without that support. No, that's that is important, man. 100 percent. If you can go back in time um, before you started college, would you have still done the same thing, gone to college, yeah. done all those things? And that was something I was thinking about the other day, like because we went to the Astros game. Yeah. And I was really passionate about baseball. And I'm like, man, if I let's say made it in baseball, you know, obviously it's not something that I do for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so if I hadn't, let's say made it in the major leagues and I played it two or three years, what was I going to be doing after? Like I was literally thinking this while I'm watching the game. Like if I look at it now and I'm like, dude, I really enjoy what I do right now. Yeah. That there's nothing else that I could think of that will bring me the same amount of joy. So you would have started earlier. I would have started earlier. Earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's a gym, whether it's, I don't know, a car wash or whatever. The case yeah. Is, you know? But the fact, is that we didn't have anybody to kind of look up to because me and my family didn't have a business owner so I, there wasn't really anybody that we could actually go and ask questions and yeah so like you know we started meeting people like you you know over there also the people yeah. that, that species talking to them like just really because you can you can sense good vibes yeah from people, you know? well even even just the whole entrepreneur aspect thing i mean it's been around forever right but yeah. no, it hasn't really been like a big thing until recently over the past few years that all of a sudden everybody wants to start their own business you know for sure college isn't really the 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 way to go yeah. unless you're very passionate about whatever it is sure. that you want to do if you want to be a lawyer a doctor or you yeah. know any of that uh i think you have to have a passion for that you have to be you know motivated to do to go to school and do all those things and actually enjoy it you yeah. know and for me, I just, nothing, nothing that I, no, there was nothing out there for me that I liked, was you know? anything else that you liked to do? No, not at all, man. So that's why I kind of like started just working, you know, as yeah. much as I could yeah. and just started going that way. And there's nothing wrong with that. I do feel like back then not going to college was like frowned upon, you know, it's like, yeah, oh, it you're was. not going to college, you know, you're, what are you doing with your life kind of thing? And now it's like, oh, you're going to college? Like, why are you going to college yeah, for, lame. you know? Yeah. yeah. I think the reason why is because social media has grown so much yeah. that it's you know people are, that are entrepreneurs are on there posting you know they're flexing Lamborghinis they're flexing fucking Rolex and all this yeah. stuff and so people's kids seeing that are like dude, I can get that without going to college so now I bet you if you look at the statistics the amount of people that go to college now compared to 10 years ago yeah oh it's significantly less of the amount of people going now no yeah and I do like that it's normal to see a younger individual with a very expensive car uh, you know it's it's a, that's not before it was like you had to be like in your uh, in your 50s yeah. or 60s, you know, to pull up with the Corvette sure. and all those things, you know. Now it's like, you know, yeah. you see younger kids driving around in really nice cars and all those things. Like, I, I think that's, I like where that's going, man. I really sure. do. I just feel like people just, uh, there's too many influencers, you know. I feel like people just need to be careful who they, who they get influenced by. Yeah. Because uh, I, I feel like that's, I feel like we all want to look up to some to someone or to something, you know. Yeah. We're just gonna make sure we're looking in the right direction and somebody that's actually gonna, you know, uh, drive us towards towards wherever it is that we want to go. Uh, but yeah, no, that's that was really know. powerful for real. Because I mean, what you're looking at, the people that you look up to, that's gonna determine how you end your life, how you become successful, or whatever the case is, whatever path yeah. you decide to choose. That's why I've never really like looked up to like anybody in particular, like, because when I look at it, even like celebrities and all this kind of stuff, like these people are just people. Yeah. And I've never idolized anybody in my life. You know, the only person I look up to is God, right? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's leading me down the path that I'm supposed to be led down. But I don't know. I guess that's just a little bit different for me. I've never like actually had like a inspiration to look up to someone. Yeah. You know? oh, well, me growing up, I did have an inspiration, somebody that I look up to a lot. And that was a Christian, a uh, Guzman. He was in the, he was doing everything that I wanted to do, you know, so I'll, to me, it was just easy to, okay, what is he doing? And I'm like, that's the route that I want to go. Yeah. How can I get there? You yeah. know, so obviously I had my, uh, my own battles throughout the days and the years and everything, sure. you know, just figuring out how I was, I was going to make that work for me. Yeah. That was the most challenging part, you know, mm -hmm. like, what do I have going on for myself? What do I have around me? Because everybody has different things, sure. you know, he had different stuff growing up i had different things growing up but we all have something you know yeah. i feel like sometimes we try to beat ourselves up a little bit too much thinking we have nothing to offer and we're never gonna achieve whatever it is that we want to achieve yeah. everybody has something For you sure. know like you had something i didn't 
vice versa. Every other entrepreneur, same thing, you know? I feel like it's just like sitting down and actually like thinking like, yeah. okay, what do I have around me and how am I gonna get from point A to point B? That's really the most challenging part, but once you figure that out, bro, it's just up from there, man, yeah. you know? That wasn't really big into YouTube, so I, I didn't really get to watch Christian Guzman videos until maybe a year before we opened. Yeah. You know, and this is like, his prime time in YouTube was what, like, you know, 2012, 2013, around that I year? think so, yeah, I think so. And so I was so caught up in sports, like watching like tutorials on how to throw a curveball or how to hit yeah, a Yeah, you were more into the sports like, side of things. My algorithm was more into like the sports related stuff instead yeah. of the fitness scene. Okay. I didn't get into the fitness scene until after I graduated college. So I think okay. that's the reason why I didn't have any, like I didn't have the chance to like look up to him because yeah. I didn't even know like who he was until I got into the fitness industry. Okay. You know? No, that makes no sense. sense to Christian. Christian's a good guy. It's yeah. like Christian who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Okay, well, I got one more question for you before we head out, okay? Yeah. What is the most amount of money you've made in a year? It'll be this year for sure. Um, yeah, what are you projecting? I mean, I think going back to the numbers, if we look at it, I mean, we should hit a million this year. A million. My yes. man, <laughs> that's fucking good. And it's as a gym owner, a million dollars in one year. That's fucking cool, man. Yeah. It's uh, not just me though, man. I can't, I can't take all the credit. I mean, my wife's a big reason behind that. Yeah. And um, that goes to anybody watching this too, man. You gotta have a good support system with you. Yeah. And that's who, you know, Abby is my support system. Yeah. Um, looking back at it, there's no way, I think I said it earlier, there's no way this gym would have been what it is without her. And so I do wanna give, you know, thanks to her as well yeah. and, and glory to her as well, because yeah, there's no way Rain would have been what it is without her. So yeah, we are we are projected to hit that. Um, and it's only it's only up from there, man. Yeah, honestly. man. Three years in, a million dollars. That's fucking cool, man. Yeah. Seriously, congrats, man. For sure. Yeah, you inspire me, and I'm sure you're gonna be inspiring a lot of people hopefully. that are watching this. Yeah, video. hopefully. I don't, no, we don't say this because we're flaunting or anything like that. I mean, yes. we're just being 100% realistic. That way, you have an actual like realistic goal or something to actually look up to, in a sense of like a financial standpoint. Yeah. I, you know, I've never been big into like showing off. That's why I'm kind of like uneasy about saying it because I, you know, I believe in bad vibes, I believe in good vibes, and all that of stuff. And so I've never, I say this in the most genuine way I can, but I don't say how much money we're making to kind of show off. I just say it because it is definitely possible to do 100%. Yeah, 100%, man. You can start off anything. Any business can be making a shit ton of money eventually if you're willing to put in the work, put in the time, and just trust the process, man. That's really the biggest thing. That's really the biggest thing. Well, Alex, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you. Absolutely. Looking forward to seeing the new uh, building. Yeah. If you haven't checked out Rain Athletics, come check it out. It's in the downtown Houston area. Amazing facility. Make sure to bring some water and bring some towels because it's hot. Yeah. They, they pass on. <laughs> thank That's you, right. bro.